so we're at Farm Ed or Honeydale Farm um, and we are currently in the process of building the dairy at Honeydale um, which is a micro dairy. We'll start with three cows which will be uh, Fleckvie cows which is a continental breed really. It's half Simmental half dairy um, and we'll milk them once a day uh, and they'll have their calves running with them for about three or four months um, and yeah we'll, we'll take that milk we'll process it and then we'll just sell uh, fresh bottled milk pasteurized uh, one litre bottles glass bottles um, and yeah sort of there'll be various collection points but all quite local so only sort of three or four villages away as well as hopefully a collection point here on the farm as well yeah so the <laughs> The cows have been quite difficult to get hold of, mainly because of Brexit. Um, they're coming, the ones that we're getting hopefully are coming from Germany, which is where the sort of, um, the Fleckvie sort of hub is down in southern Germany. So they're coming from there. Um, they're incredibly popular. They're the most popular cow in Europe uh, for dairy, but they just haven't really, they haven't really got to um, the UK as, as much as the sort of traditional like black and white cows. Um, but they are slowly making a bit more of an appearance um, because there's, there's a lot of uh, problems from overbreeding black and white cows that are becoming sort of making them quite difficult to keep going and that sort of thing. Um, whereas with the Fleck Vs there, uh, there's, there's a bit less, less intensive breeding of them. So, um, there's fewer problems in terms of fertility and uh, things like that, so bad feet and things like that. So, um, yeah, they're becoming a lot more popular um, at the moment, but it's just trying to get on the bandwagon early. But, um, yeah, we originally were hoping to have them sort of here before Christmas even. Um, that didn't work out very well uh, <laughs> because, one, the border got closed at France, and then to follow that, um, the yeah Brexit happened and there was an, a, just a complete catastrophe of trying to get anything over the border, especially live animals. Um, so yeah, they've sort of worked it all out now. The other trouble was because we only want three, they don't warrant their own lorry coming. Um, so we've had to wait to get on the back of a different load of someone else. So there's also on the same load, there's 35 that are going up to Cheshire. Uh, after they've come here. So they'll just be on a little section on the back um, and then they'll carry on up, up to there. So yeah, um, they've, been, they've been synchronized and artificially inseminated in Germany. So basically what it, what it means is because we've only got three, we don't want to be carving over like six weeks. Um, we want it quite short and sharp. Hopefully they should all be carving on the same day. So they've, 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 it's all been worked out so they are carving on the same day, but it'll probably be over two or three days. Um, they will carve at the end of April, um, so it won't be an awful long time between them being here and them having carved on the ground, which is good. Um, and then we'll start milking them sort of 24, 48 hours after they carve, so that the calf has enough all the colostrum um, so that it's strong going forward. Um, Yes, they're first time carvers, so they're heifers, um, which will be interesting because heifers obviously haven't been milked before, so there'll be a few legs flying around. Um, but yeah, being a dairy breed, they are calmer um, and hopefully come sort of three or four milkings in, they'll be all nice and used to it and it'll just be part of the system. So yeah, it's a bit untidy at the moment, um, but so we've got, this would be the bedding area. So um, they'll spend, about three, three, four months depends on the available forage outside. So as soon as it is a combination of it, A, being too wet and B, there being not a lot of food about, they'll come in and we'll probably dry them off at about that period. We're thinking sort of end of November time. Um, and then they'll come in here. This will all be bedded up with straw. Um, so we've got a nice concrete floor to make life easy um, and try and keep feet in good condition. Um, and they'll, we'll have obviously feed along the front here. Um, what we might in the summer use this as extra grain storage. So everything here is removable. So the, the feed barriers can come out. Uh, the only thing that stays is the wall. Um, so basically if we wanted to tip grain in the back corner, we'll muck it all out 
and disinfect it, and we can tip grain in there. Um, they'll carve in here as well, so um, we'll get a few gates and just make a couple of little carving pens for the first couple of days to check that everything's all right in that, in that respect. Um, from a day-to-day -day point of view, they'll, be, they'll live out as soon as it's dry enough they'll, and they've carved, they'll live out. Uh, they'll come in first thing in the morning and they'll stand in a collection pen just here um, while we get all the sort of milking set up ready. And then they'll go through, we can probably go over if you like, we, they'll go through um, and we've built two stalls um, in just a sort of a breast parlour. So they'll stand in here, wait to be milked with the calves. They'll then come in to either parlour. We'll put the clusters on one while we prep the second one. And then when she's finished, they'll do a loop round the back and then back out again. We might need to use the calves to induce milking. So we've got this sort of setup where we can, should need be, put a calf on at the same time as milking. So you'd literally, instead of having four clusters on, you'd twist one round, you'd have the calf feeding on one and you can milk the other three. Um, but that should hopefully be only for the first sort of, I don't know, week or so, if that. Um, some of them might take to it straight away and they don't need the calves on at all, but some of them might take a bit more getting used to it because it's a bit, it's a bit different to a normal sort of dairy system. Um, and then, yeah, once they're done, they'll loop out the back and then back out into the field for the rest of the day. What I'll do with the milk, that'll be collected round the corner. Um, we'll just use a single, it's called like a dump bucket. Um, once that's full up for the day's milking, we'll go up the steps in the corner and we'll go into these processing rooms in the back here. So that comprises of three rooms. The first is like a, a dirty room where you take your overalls off, wash your hands, put new overalls on um, and change from the parlour churn into a cleaner one, a stainless steel one. Um, then go on to the second room where the milk is pasteurised and then the final third room, which is this closest one with the windows, um, where all the bottling takes place. And then it'll go out that door to whichever dis dispatch route that it's going to. Um, we'll probably have three different collection points a week um, to sort of spread out the milk over the week. So you'll, we'll probably do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday or something along those lines. Um, and yeah, supply each different collection point on each different day sort of thing. So um, yeah, and hopefully we plan to supply about 55 customers in the first year, averaging about three litres per customer per week. Um, that may all change. Um, it depends on how much the calf is drinking. It depends on how much the cow is yielding. They yield a little bit less because they're heifers to begin with. So in the following years, there'll be more milk available, but for the first, we just thought we'll keep it nice and simple. Uh, I was advised to get heifers to start with because it is such a different system. And if you were bringing a conventional dairy cow onto the system, it would struggle to con grasp the concept of milking while also rearing a calf at the same time. So um, yeah, we're sort of in at the deep end. Um, but yeah, hopefully year one will go well and we'll have, um, yeah, three milking cows, which will then hopefully turn into five, possibly next year, and we'll increase our product range as we go on. Cow calf dairying is a sort. It's quite a new principle. It's very. It's quite popular in America, where they do more like of the homesteading type thing. Um, it's it's a way of rearing a calf to a real decent sort of healthy weight uh, naturally. So it's almost living like a suckler cow, um, and then. At the same time, it's also we're also producing milk as a secondary product for our consumption. Um, on this system, the beef cow, as in the beef calf, will also be uh, will will send that for beef. So there'll be both milk and beef coming from from the from the business. Um, it's 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 you a car a cow will rear a calf far better than any milk replacer or artificial milk or robot or anything like that so because we're only milking once a day it's it's a good way of keeping production up in the actual cow um, 
so that so that your yield doesn't drop too much but there is a fine balance between not letting the cow have too much uh, sorry the calf have too much therefore leaving not a lot for you so we're going to do a thing called we're going to practice um, a thing called quiet weaning which is where you separate cow and calf overnight uh, you then take the production that is first thing in the morning so you'll get that overnight production of milk and then when after the after milking the cow will go back with the calf for the rest of the day and it can feed for the for the whole rest of the day and you'll separate them again sort of late in the evening um, so they'll they'll graze all over the farm so we've got loads of different things that they can graze on which will be quite interesting to see what it does to the actual taste and the milk profile um, there are dairies that are doing herbal lay grazing at the moment um, on a on a large commercial scale um, but we've all you know we've got other things as well so this is rye vetch this will probably be more or less the first thing that they graze on um, after we fetch train them because uh, it'll all be on electric um, so there's yeah there's there's herb rich lays there's rye vetch there's permanent pasture there's samphoin um, and then there's 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 various other trial plots you know we had a sort of samphoin cross vetch plot over there last year um, and they'll sort of the first of all the cows will go through and they'll graze and then secondly the sheep will go through and they'll graze after that because they obviously graze in different ways so um, it'll be you know good for the plant health it'll be good for the soil structure it'll be good for uh, just keeping the whole thing sort of sustainable and keeping it all healthy um, the only problem we have here is we're on stony brash um, Cotswold brash and it does need rain in the spring uh, if there is no rain in the spring it doesn't grow uh, it's looking quite nice at the moment um, but if it now doesn't rain so it looks quite dry for a bit which is nice uh, if it doesn't rain and the soil temperature doesn't warm up we might be in a bit of a sticky situation but um, we can always get available forage um, locally which is good um, but it'd be nice to be able to just you know keep everything fed from the farm so you know we're hoping to sort of cut the samphoin hay or silage and then we'll feed that back to the cattle over winter when they're in same with the permanent pasture at the bottom um, but yeah it's you know it's having enough for the, the cow to produce milk the calf to grow grow on as well so um, yeah there is there's a bit of demand for good good quality available forage which i'm sure will come uh, it always finds a way of working itself out um, but it's that hunger gap at the end of the end of the winter, not quite the beginning of the spring, where nothing's growing and everything's been eaten. Um, it's just a slightly nervous, nervous moment. <laughs> we are hoping, although we we don't want to get too carried away, we are hoping that the cows will arrive on a week today, so the 22nd. Um, <laughs> it's been, like we said, it's been difficult to get hold of them, uh, and. I, although I am incredibly excited and quite nervous, I don't want to get too carried away thinking they'll definitely be here. Um, but yes, hopefully the 22nd, calving end of April, cows and calves turned out end of April and we'll start milking and it'll all go nice and smoothly from there. So we'll see.